Chapters 1 through 19 of The Beauties of Tennyson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 1 The Brook. I come from haunts of Coot and Hearn. I make sudden sally and sparkle out among the fern to bicker down a valley. By thirty hills I hurry down, or slip between the ridges, by twenty thorps, a little town, and half a hundred bridges. I chatter over stony ways, in little sharps and trebles, I bubble into eddying bays, I babble on the pebbles. With many a curve my banks I fret, by many a field and fallow, and many a fairy foreland set, with willow weed and mallow. And here and there a foamy lake, upon me as I travel, with many a silvery water break, above the golden gravel, and draw them all along, and flow, to join the brimming river. For men may come, and men may go, but I go on for ever. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 Song from Maud See what a lovely shell, small and pure as a pearl, lying close to my foot, frail, but a work divine, made so fairly well, with delicate spire and whorl, how exquisitely minute, a miracle of design. What is it? A learned man could give it a clumsy name. Let him name it who can. The beauty would be the same. The tiny cell is forlorn, void of the little living will that made it stir on the shore. Did he stand at the diamond door of his house in a rainbow frill? Did he push, when he was uncurled, a golden foot or a fairy horn, through his dim water world? Slight to be crushed with a tap of my fingernail on the sand. Small, but a work divine. Frail, but a force to withstand, year upon year. The shock of cataract seas that snap the three-decker's oaken spine, athwart the ledges of rock, here on the Breton strand. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 A Farewell Flow down, cold rivulet, to the sea, thy tribute wave deliver. No more by thee my steps shall be for ever and for ever. Flow, softly flow, by lawn and lea, a rivulet, then a river. Nowhere by thee my steps shall be, for ever and for ever. But here will sigh thine alder tree, and here thine aspen shiver, and here by thee will hum the bee, for ever and for ever. A thousand suns will stream on thee, a thousand moons will quiver, but not by thee my steps shall be, for ever and for ever. End of chapter 3 Chapter 4 Song from Maud Come into the garden, Maud, For the black bat, night has flown. Come into the garden, Maud, I am here at the gate alone, And the woodbine spices are wafted abroad, And the musk of the roses blown. For a breeze of morning moves, And the planet of love is on high, beginning to faint in the light that she loves on a bed of daffodil sky, to faint in the light of the sun she loves, to faint in his light, and to die. There has fallen a splendid tear from the passion flower at the gate. She is coming, my dove, my dear, she is coming, my life, my fate. The red rose cries, she is near, she is near, and the white rose weeps, she is late. The larkspur listens, I hear, I hear, and the lily whispers, I wait. She is coming, my own, my sweet, were it ever so airy a tread. My heart would hear her and beat, were it earth in an earthy bed. My dust would hear her and beat, had I lain for a century dead, would start and tremble under her feet, and blossom in purple and red. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 Break, break, break Break, break, break 
on thy cold gray stones, O sea, and I would that my tongue could utter the thoughts that arise in me. O oh, well for the fisherman's boy, that he shouts with his sister at play. O oh, well for the sailor lad, that he sings in his boat on the bay. And the stately ships go on to their haven under the hill. But O oh, for the touch of a vanished hand, and the sound of a voice that is still. Break, 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 at the foot of thy crags, O oh, sea. But the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to me. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 from Loxley Hall Love took up the glass of time, and turned it in his glowing hands. Every moment, lightly shaken, ran itself in golden sands. Love took up the harp of life, and smote on all the chords with might, smote the chord of self, that trembling, passed in music out of sight. Many a morning on the moorland did we hear the copses ring, and her whisper thronged my pulses with the fullness of the spring. Many an evening by the waters did we watch the stately ships, and our spirits rushed together at the touching of the lips. O oh, my cousin, shallow-hearted, O oh, my Amy, mine no more, O oh, the dreary, dreary moorland, O oh, the barren, barren shore. End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 Song from Maud Go not, happy day, from the shining fields, Go not, happy day, till the maiden yields. Rosy is the west, rosy is the south, Roses are her cheeks, and a rose her mouth, When the happy, yes, falters from her lips. Pass and blush the news over glowing ships, Over blowing seas, over seas at rest, Pass the happy news, blush it through the west, Till the red man dance by his red cedar tree, And the red man's babe leap beyond the sea, Blush from west to east, blush from east to west, Till the west is east, blush it through the west, Rosy is the west, rosy is the south, Roses are her cheeks, and a rose her mouth. End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 Song from the Princess Sweet and low, sweet and low, Wind of the western sea, Low, low, breathe and blow, Wind of the western sea, Over the rolling waters go, Come from the dying moon, and blow, Blow him again to me, while my little one, while my pretty one, sleeps. Sleep and rest, sleep and rest. Father will come to thee soon. Rest, rest on mother's breast. Father will come to thee soon. Father will come to his babe in the nest. Silver sails all out of the west, under the silver moon. Sleep, my little one, sleep, my pretty one sleep. End of chapter 8. Chapter 9. Lillian. Airy, fairy, Lillian, flitting fairy, Lillian, when I ask her if she love me, claps her tiny hands above me, laughing all she can. She'll not tell me if she love me, cruel little Lillian, when my passion seeks pleasance in love sighs, she, looking through and through me, Thoroughly to undo me, smiling, never speaks, So innocent arch, so cunning simple, From beneath her gathered wimple, Glancing with black beaded eyes, Till the lightning laughters dimple, The baby roses in her cheeks, Then away she flies. Pry thee weep, May Lillian, Gaiety without eclipse, Wearieth me, May Lillian, through my very heart it thrilleth, When from crimson-threaded lips Silver treble laughter trilleth. Pry thee weep, May Lillian, Praying all I can, If prayers will not hush thee, Airy Lillian, Like a rose-leaf I will crush thee, Fairy Lillian. End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 Ring out, wild bells! Ring out, wild bells! To the wild sky, 
the flying cloud, the frosty light, the year is dying in the night. Ring out, wild bells, and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new. Ring, happy bells, across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind, for those that here we see no more. Ring out the feud of rich and poor, ring in redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause, and ancient forms of party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life, with sweeter manners, purer laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin, the faithless coldness of the times. Ring out, ring out my mournful rhymes, but ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out false pride in place and blood, the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right, ring in the common love of good. Ring out old shapes of foul disease, ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old, ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free, the larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land, ring in the Christ that is to be. End of chapter 10 Chapter 11 from the princess tears idle tears i know not what they mean tears from the depth of some divine despair rise in the heart and gather to the eyes and looking on the happy autumn fields and thinking of the days that are no more fresh as the first beam glittering on a sail that brings our friends up from the underworld sad as the last which reddens over one that sinks with all we love below the verge so sad so fresh the days that are no more ah sad and strange as in dark summer dawns the earliest pipe of half-awakened birds to dying ears when unto dying eyes the casement slowly grows a glimmering square so sad so strange the days that are no more dear as remembered kisses after death and sweet as those by hopeless fancy feigned on lips that are for others deep as love deep as first love and wild with all regret o oh, death in life the days that are no more end of chapter eleven chapter twelve song from the princess the splendor falls on castle walls and snowy summits old in story the long light shakes across the lakes, and the wild cataract leaps in glory. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes, dying, dying, dying. O oh, hark, O oh, hear, how thin and clear, and thinner, clearer, farther going. O oh, sweet, and far from cliff and scar, the horns of Elfland faintly blowing. Blow. Let us hear the purple glens replying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes, dying, dying, dying. O oh, love, they die in yon rich sky, they faint on hill or field or river. Our echoes roll from soul to soul, and grow for ever and for ever. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying, and answer, echoes, answer, dying 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 end of chapter twelve chapter thirteen from enoch arden the mountain wooded to the peak the lawns and winding glades high up like ways to heaven the slender cocos drooping crown of plumes the lightning flash of insect and of bird the lustre of the long convolvuluses that coiled around the stately stems and ran even to the limit of the land the glows and glories of the broad belt of the world all these he saw but what he fain had seen he could not see the kindly human face nor ever hear a kindly voice but heard the myriad shriek of wheeling ocean fowl the league-long roller thundering on the reef the moving whisper of huge trees that branched and blossomed in the zenith or the sweep of some precipitous rivulet to the wave 
as down the shore he ranged or all day long sat often in the seaward gazing gorge a shipwrecked sailor waiting for a sail no sail from day to day but every day the sunrise broken into scarlet shafts among the palms and ferns and precipices the blaze upon the waters to the east the blaze upon his island overhead the blaze upon the waters to the west then the great stars that globed themselves in heaven the hollower bellowing ocean and again the scarlet shafts of sunrise but no sail end of chapter thirteen chapter fourteen from enoch arden but enoch yearned to see her face again if i might look on her sweet face again and know that she is happy so the thought haunted and harassed him and drove him forth at evening when the dull november day was growing duller twilight to the hill there he sat down gazing on all below there did a thousand memories roll upon him unspeakable for sadness by and by the ruddy square of comfortable light for blazing from the rear of philip's house allured him as the beacon blaze allures the bird of passage till he madly strikes against it and beats out his weary life for philip's dwelling fronted on the street the latest house to landward but behind with one small gate that opened on the waste flourished a little garden square and walled and in it throve an ancient evergreen a yew tree and all round it ran a walk of shingle and a walk divided it but enoch shunned the middle walk and stole up by the wall behind the yew and thence that which he better might have shunned if griefs like his have worse or better enoch saw end of chapter fourteen chapter fifteen the charge of the light brigade half a league half a league half a league onward all in the valley of death rode the six hundred forward the light brigade charge for the guns he said and to the valley of death rode the six hundred forward the light brigade was there a man dismayed not though the soldier knew some one had blundered theirs not to make reply theirs not to reason why theirs but to do and die into the valley of death rode the six hundred cannon to left of them cannon to right of them cannon in front of them volleyed and thundered stormed at with shot and shell boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death into the mouth of hell rode the six hundred flashed all their sabres bare flashed as they turned in air sabring the gunners there charging an army while all the world wondered plunged in the battery smoke right through the line they broke cossack and russian reeled from the sabre stroke shattered and sundered then they rode back but not not the six hundred cannon to left of them cannon to right of them cannon behind them volleyed and thundered stormed at with shot and shell while horse and hero fell they that had fought so well came through the jaws of death back from the mouth of hell all that was left of them left of six hundred when can their glory fade oh the wild charge they made all the world wondered honour the charge they made honour the light brigade noble six hundred end of chapter fifteen chapter sixteen from the may queen you must wake and call me early call me early mother dear to-morrow will be the happiest time of all the glad new year of all the glad new year mother the maddest merriest day for i'm to be queen of the may mother i'm to be queen of the may there's many a black black eye they say but none so bright as mine there's margaret and mary there's kate and carolyn but none so fair as little alice in all the land they say so i'm to be queen of the may mother i'm to be queen of the may end of chapter sixteen chapter seventeen song from the princess as through the land at eve we went and plucked the ripened ears we fell out my wife and i oh we fell out i know not why and kissed again with tears and blessings on the falling out 
that all the more endears when we fall out with those we love and kiss again with tears for when we came where lies the child we lost in other years there above the little grave oh there above the little grave we kissed again with tears end of chapter seventeen chapter eighteen from harold toasted what for norway then he looks for land among us he and his harold seven feet of english land or something more seeing he is a giant toastig that is noble that sounds of godwin herald come thou back and be once more a son of godwin toastig turns away oh brother brother oh herald herald laying his hand on toastig's shoulder nay then come thou back to us toastig after a pause turning to him never shall any man say that i that Tostig conjured the mightier herald from the north to do the battle for me here in England, then left him for the meaner, thee. Thou hast no passion for the house of Godwin. Thou hast but cared to make thyself a king. Thou hast sold me for a cry. Thou gavest thy voice against me in the council. I hate thee, and despise thee, and defy thee. Farewell for ever. Exit. Herald. On to Stamford Bridge. End of chapter 18. Chapter 19. From the Revenge. And the sun went down, and the stars came out far over the summer sea. But never a moment ceased the fight of the one and the fifty-three. Ship after ship, the whole night long, their high-built galleons came. Ship after ship, the whole night long, with her battle thunder and flame ship after ship the whole night long drew back with her dead and her shame for some were sunk and many were shattered and so could fight us no more god of battles was ever a battle like this in the world before and the night went down and the sun smiled out far over the summer sea and the spanish fleet with broken sides lay round us all in a ring but they dared not touch us again for they feared that we still could sting. So they watched what the end would be, and we had not fought them in vain. But in perilous plight were we, seeing forty of our poor hundred were slain, and half of the rest of us maimed for life, in the crash of the cannonades, and the desperate strife. And the sick men down in the hold were most of them stark and cold, and the pikes were all broken or bent, and the powder was all of it spent, and the masts and the rigging were lying over the side. End of chapter 19, and also the end of Beauties of Tennyson.